What is up everyone in the Ripple and XRP community? Good morning, happy Thursday. It is a softball kind of night. 8.30 game, we are looking for back-to-back -back wins. I can't wait. I really just wish we had a double header. But anyways, listen, a lot to go over today. You wanna know what we're gonna talk about? We're gonna talk about a possible settlement between the Ripple and SEC. That is right, this is no joke. You don't wanna miss it. The SEC is calling in two new lawyers. There could only be one of two reasons for this. I'm gonna go over them, and boy, wait till you find out what one of these lawyers, what his job is to do. We did see a little bit of movement in XRP's prices last night, always a good thing. But Bitcoin is coming up to a key number. Let's jump into this, people. Bitcoin is currently sitting up 4% at 57,894. Bitcoin breaks 60K. We are going back into that other Bitcoin run I have been talking about, which is going to indicate even further, which will bring further clarity to us, that this bull run is going to last all year and possibly into next year. Something I have been saying since last December. The total market cap is up 4%. We are currently at 2.4 trillion. I'm telling you, when this is all said and done, we are looking at about five, four to five trillion dollars here, which is absolutely tremendous. The price of XRP is currently sitting at $1.67. It's up 13%. I put out a tweet yesterday from a man Harry. We were going after the $1.96 levels once again. We got a little hung up at $1.75. We haven't retraced too far. Let's see what comes out of this today. If Bitcoin keeps moving, I expect XRP to keep moving as well. $1.96 is that next key number, people. We break $1.96. We can talk about that all-time high. We have made two attempts to get past $1.96 so far. Both attempts have come up short. One hit $1.95. This one pushed us to $1.75, and we kind of stalled down. All is good, though. All right, let's jump into this news. Up first, Flub Flare Networks. Unlocking value. Check this out. Trustline Inc. So Trustline Inc. is a third-party company who is building on top of Flare Networks to help unlock value in P2P apps, which will, use, which will go through and leverage a stable coin. So check out this demo right here. What this is gonna show you is a mobile payment using Array. Array was borrowed from Pro Probity and transferred to the XRP ledger. So if your balance is insufficient for payment, you're able to borrow against your XRP balance in real time. This is where the financial, the payment systems are going. Check this out, it's 21 seconds. It's pretty neat, isn't it? And it's all leverages through a stable coin. I want to move over to this. So the, the Ari, and I'm probably destroying the name, stable coin. It's backed and secured by crypto collateral. It's backed by FL, FLR and XRP and other cryptocurrencies. And it's going to be the first stable coin to be issued trust, trustlessly on the XRP ledger. This is huge. Remember next month give or take two to four weeks according to flare flare networks is going live it is going to unlock value that's why they keep putting out that message flare unlocking value here unlocking value there it's going to unlock value for xrp slm dodge flare is the final piece to this puzzle poly sign and standard custody is now live. We have one piece left before we're gonna see this in action. Factor all this in with the SEC lawsuit getting cleared up. Factor this all in with XRP being listed on these US exchanges. You are going to see a moonshot in price like you have never seen before. Then it's gonna hit you, you be like, wow, Ripple Van Winkle's been telling us $10 XRP's coming this year. When you see the green candle that prints after this clarity from the SEC lawsuit, you're going to think $10 is too low. Mark my words. Then from Michael Manfield, Ripple's partner, DLoco, 
is going after an IPO. They file for an IPO. And the, the interesting part is, look who's backing this. The underwriting group is led by J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Citigroup, and Morgan Stanley, who are acting as global coordinators at BOFA Securities, HSBC, and UBS Investment Bank, who are acting as joint book runners. D local IPO. Very interesting to see who's doing the underwriting and how, where and how high this IPO can actually go. Because they're the D local is the future of finance with them running on top of RippleNet and the ILP. Here's the article just from Ripple Insights in October 2017 when D local initially joined Ripple's enterprise blockchain network. Just showing you that they are indeed attached to RippleNet. And now we're going to get into the SEC and why I think an SEC settlement is coming sooner than you think. So before we get going, today was the day they were going to have that closed door meeting. It has been postponed. Let me show you that. Sir Gordon put it up for us. SEC meetings, boom, move back to May 7th. So it's moved back till tomorrow. Real XFP boy puts this out. He says, they've been all over this since the early days. It's a coordinated effort. Sit back, relax, and catch a contact. Ripple XRP versus SEC's perspectives. So what is he talking about? I'm going to show you right now. Back in the day, paper was put out. And it says, FinCEN, who has cleared XRP as a currency, and the SEC have hosted meetings with industry representatives and consultants to discuss how virtual currency systems such as Bitcoin and Ripple work and what legal, regulatory, technology, and law enforcement issues they present. These ish agencies have in initiated officials or have invited officials from other federal agencies to these sessions. So you have FinCEN and the SEC sitting down in the same room not once, not twice, but multiple times discussing virtual currency systems. Virtual currency systems. A currency cannot be a security. A virtual currency cannot be a security. So once again, what is this lawsuit really about? I want you to think about that. I think it's about, it's the only way they were able to get regulations into this market because this is going to drop the hammer. And it's going to drop the hammer on Bitcoin. It's going to drop the hammer on Ethereum. Ripple is going to be the one that set out the regulations for the whole crypto market. And your fancy little coin over there can thank Ripple and can thank XRP. Because if they would have taken Cardano, EOS, Bitcoin Cash, any of those, Nate put, insert any coin in there. If they would have tried to take any of those companies to court, they do not have the funding to battle the SEC. They would have did a settlement. They would have given cases dropped. Where they, they agreed to pay this fine. They agreed not to do operations anymore like they were doing. But you wouldn't get clarity. From this court case, we will get clarity. So as you can see, FinCEN and the SEC have been meeting behind closed doors for quite some time. FinCEN is the one who agreed XRP, who signed off, actually fined Ripple, that saying that XRP will be treated as a currency. Then we move over to the next page. It says one more prominent example is XRP, which is used within a decentralized payment system called Ripple. Ripple allows users to make peer to peer transfers in any currency. A key function of XRP is to facilitate the conversion from one currency to another. For example, if a direct connection between Mexico's pesos and the Thai bot is not available, the pesos can be exchanged for XRP and any XRP for bot. As of March 31st, 2014, the total value of XRP was $878 million. So there's another example of the SEC and FinCEN. And this is coming from GAO.gov people. So this is another example when I talk about XRP is being with, used within a decentralized system. If, if Ripple has a decentralized system, there is no central asset to it, means that they're not running it, means that XRP is decentralized and no one controls it. 
everything is adding up to a coordinated effort here. And here's just the paper if you want to look it up. It's called Virtual Currencies Emerging Regulatory Law Enforcement and Consumer Protection Challenges. So why did I bring this all up? Well, the SEC is bringing on two new people. Two new lawyers to the case. There are two reasons here that you're bringing two new lawyers to this case. The first one, Gary Gensler isn't happy with the current job that the SEC is doing. The second one, Gary Gensler is calling in this guy. He's calling to the bullpen to bring in the closer because he is looking to get out. He is looking for a settlement. He wants this thing over with so we can move on and we can get regulations out. So bring up this from Lord Lionel, Rob Moy. He's a senior trial consultant at the U.S. Security, or senior trial counsel, excuse me, at the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. Well, here's his LinkedIn page. For the past 15 years, he has litigated cases involving violations of the security laws in federal district court and the SEC administrative proceedings. These cases include insider trading, investment advisor misconduct, financial accounting fraud, auditing violations, and offering fraud. Ponzi and affinity fraud schemes. I help conclude complex investigations, provide advice to SEC senior officials regarding charging decisions and negotiating settlements. So Rob was just called into the triple verse SEC lawsuit. I'm going to give you Jeremy Hogan's take first on this, and then I'm going to give you my take. So Jeremy Hogan puts out, the SEC is bringing in two lawyers from Chicago to assist with the case. The lawyers have 18 and 25 years experience, so these are senior trial lawyers. I would say this means that the SEC is calling in the reinforcements. It could mean the SEC just needs more help because Ripple is fighting back hard, or it could mean that someone decided that there needs to be a new lead counsel. My guess is the older Chicago attorney will be the new lead, as you don't need a 25-year-old lawyer just to help out. I'm going to play devil advocates here. What do I believe? I don't think that... The SEC is calling in this 25-year artist, this veteran lawyer from Chicago who knows how to close out cases, who, not, who knows how to negotiate settlements because they're looking for more help because Ripple is fighting back. The SEC came into this lawsuit, knew Ripple was going balls to the wall. They knew they weren't going to sit down, lay down on the backs let the SEC push him over. So I don't think this is the reason. What I believe here, and I'm telling you this, and I have told you this before, what I firmly believe is this guy is coming in and they're going to settle this case. What I believe is going to be discussed in this closed-door meeting. Yes, listen, this closed-door meeting isn't about Ripple and XRP. Will Ripple versus SEC lawsuit be discussed? Absolutely. First, Gary gets the closed-door meeting coming? Of course it's going to be. Among many other things. But they are bringing this guy in. Rob Moy, who has, who has helped conclude complex investigations with this is, and to provide advice to SEC senior officials regarding charging decisions and negotiating settlements. Because he's going to help negotiate a settlement. They're going to figure out what's going on with XRP. There is a reason you bring this guy in. If you, you don't think that this other lawyer is doing a good job, who knows? Who knows what is really going on, right? We're still in discovery. There was a reason that this other lawyer was put in this case. He would have been pulled a long time ago. But you're bringing in someone that has 30 years experience and who helps conclude these... Comp and now this is one of the most complex investigations ever, right? Because OpenCoin was the initial ones who had XRP and then... That company went away, and but they gifted the XRP to this company called... R it is so complex how this works. It can be twist and turn in any way you want to look at this thing. But at the end of the day, XRP is a decentralized currency already agreed upon by FinCEN and the Department of Justice. Uh, yeah, the Department of Justice. So you have two branches of the government, the DOJ and FinCEN, telling you XRP is a security... You then have the SEC saying that it's or saying it's not a security. You then have the SEC stepping in, telling you XRP is a security. But then you have Gary Gensler saying that he's going to lean on the DOJ and the Treasury and all those other branches to make rulings on cryptocurrencies because they don't want to deal with it. So if that's the case, the SEC has no reason to be suing Ripple or to clear, declare XRP a currency because Gary Gensler is saying that 
they're not going to do that. They they will only act upon it if these if these assets are found out to be securities. But this was already already cleared by his branches that he pointed to for help. And then to top it all off, you have the 43rd Department of Treasury leaving the Department of Treasury to join Ripple. Everything is going on here for a reason. This is going to bring clarity. This guy is stepping in to help negotiate a settlement. Is a settlement a bad thing? No, some of you twist it like it's a bad thing. A settlement could be anything. We do not know the terms as of yet if there is a settlement. Remember, this is my opinion. If there is a settlement, the settlement terms could be like this. Hey, Ripple, Brad and Chris, we want you to pay a fine for selling XRP. You pay the fine, we will agree to put out a letter to declare XRP a currency in the United States and to also clarify that it is not a security. That is a settlement. A settlement just doesn't mean people pay fines. We don't get clarity here. So a settlement is also a good thing. It's all how it's worded. But there is a reason this guy's being brought in. I don't think he's being brought in because they need the help. I think he's being brought in because this case is so complex. Gensler wants out. The SEC has been made to look so stupid so far. And now the SEC is all of a sudden stating that there was never any paperwork that stated Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, or XRP on it. After we already found out, there was like, what, 